Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Matanori. A lovely collar dove joining us here. It's Beltane or May Day. I think sometimes known as Labour Day too. It's one of my favourite, favourite times of the year. This story is called How Jack Stood Here Ended Up in the Green. I'm going to remove my hat because part of it is clicking and I think that's going to be rather annoying. As the energy builds and builds, the Morris dance around a spinning jack. They raise him high and then cut him down. They then tear him limb from limb, tossing his leaves and flowers into the crowd and thus, thus releasing the spirit of summer into this land once more so all was happy and content and good with the world well that's how my story ends but i'm going to tell you how it began see once upon a time many many years ago a time before clocks and calendars and timelines the people of land would only know the time of year by having to observe the changing of the seasons around them. Sadly, most people were not really bothered about this and generally preferred to keep themselves to themselves. Their life was without colour and joy. But around this time also, there lived a man named Jack. He was a simple man, not particularly rich, not overly tall, handsome or even clever. But he was a kind and generous man who loved the natural world around him and he had one simple wish he just wanted to make others happy he was always aware of the change of seasons and knew it was important to all humankind to notice this he knew that all people needed to connect with nature or be forever doomed to a life of greyness and sadness he would spend his days each year watching the seasons and would always be the first to notice when it did change. In particular, Jack wanted all to know when the brighter and warmer days were coming, as he knew it was good for the people to have a hope after a long and cold and dark winter. He would great, take great joy in heralding in the summer. It was his favourite season after all. And he was often seen and heard shouting aloud to anyone that would care to listen and also those that didn't want to listen hark and rejoice for the spirit of summer has arrived most people would generally ignore this eccentric silly old man and would just go about their day you know not really noticing anything special about it every day seemed well the same to them but one day now to us it would probably be in around the beginning of may jack decided to take a long walk up in the hills and through to the greenwood it was a warm and sunny day and the sound of birdsong filled the skies he pondered as he wandered but still could not get the important message of this time of year through to the people he thought hard and long about how he could spread the happiness and love and inspiration that he would feel. Finally it occurred to him and he decided that he may need to give the people a token of the season's change and in doing so it would lift their spirits by bringing colour into their lives. Yes, he said, a little louder than needed, I shall use a small token that contains the spirit of summer and give it to the people. Everyone likes a nice gift after all, he thought to himself. When they received it, they will know for sure that the summer has arrived and they can and will be happy, just like me. Before long, Jack found himself deep into the woodland in a place that he had neither seen nor been to before. He thought he'd explored every part of the woods in his lifetime, but this place was very different. It was a magical place. A realm full of wonder and mystery. A place that seemed between the worlds and as old as time itself. Jack 
did not feel at all afraid though. Well, moreover, he felt like he belonged there and everything seemed to make sense all of a sudden. It was a very special place indeed. As he continued on his journey, he came across a clearing and in the centre was an ancient mighty oak tree surrounded by wild flowers of bluebell, wild garlic, gorse and dog violets and many others too numerous to mention today. He felt a strange but comforting presence surround him, a welcome presence of a time long past and all of time seemed to stand still. After what felt like a few moments he decided to pick some of the flowers and the freshly emerging leaves from nearby trees and bushes and then he sorted them and bowed them to make small posies so he could give them to the people in the town. It was not quite enough for everyone but he thought that should be enough to, to start what he intended to do. It was early next morning when Jack found himself back in town near his home. What was just a few moments in that greenwood was many hours in the real world. As he continued to head from home, posies in hand, he saw a young milkmaid who was just starting her rounds. He decided to give her the dozen or so posies that he made and respectfully requested that she told all the people she met that day that the summer was here and to show them the posies of leaves and flowers. And for whoever she felt most needed, she could offer them a posy to keep, but also remembered to keep one for herself and her family. She did exactly as was asked, because as soon as she held the little tokens, she felt that this task was very, very important and too magical to ignore. But she really wanted to enable the feeling that she had and share it with everyone she would meet on this day. Realised there wasn't quite enough and she was too, in, too indecisive to kind of decide who to give it to. She thought that everyone needs to receive a part of it. So she decided to parade along the streets with them and everyone she met, she delivered, she delivered Jack's message. And with that, she would give a leaf or a flower petal. Every time she did this, there was an amazing change that occurred. For everyone that was gifted a leaf or a flower petal, seemed to have their spirits lifted and their life and colour entered their souls and all was happy and content and good with the world. The following day Jack returned to the hills and up to the woodland. He soon found that magical realm once more that he'd happened upon the previous day. He again felt that extraordinary presence but this time it felt slightly different. It seemed more sinister or slightly darker, almost as if he was maybe not as welcome as he was the day before. Or he'd forgotten something. Jack shook, shook this off as just a feeling of maybe nervous excitement uh, due to the previous day's festivities and how his plan worked, and it hoped that he could be repeated today. The place again was awash with greenery and flowers. All around him seemed to be replenished as if he had not been there the day before or taken anything the day before. Without thought of consequences, he decided to take a few more flowers and leaves as he did then before, so as to give them to the townsfolk again, as it made them so happy the previous day. And maybe that milkmaid could help him again and try to see more people this time. Time had once more passed quickly and it was early in the morning when Jack returned. This time he did give half to the milkmaid, but he also found a chimney sweep who was also starting his rounds. They both agreed to share the tokens of the summertime and hope by sharing they will be able to give more to the people. So the posies were again first paraded around the streets by that milkmaid and young sweep who seemed to try and make a big show of it and tried to show off so he could celebrate the best. Next, they broke the posies up into little pieces and everyone who wanted one could have a piece of it into their lives. So all was happy and content and good with the world. On the third day, Jack returned up the hills once more and into that clearing in the greenwood. 
But the feeling was even more sinister. Still special, but still darker and strange. As if something was wrong or he was definitely no longer welcome there. He noticed that the leaves and flowers looked replenished again. So Jack thought it would be okay to take a few more. As he reached to grab some particularly nice looking oxide daisy, suddenly the whole atmosphere changed. He noticed that the mighty oak tree in the centre was rustling and moving, but there was no wind, and it appeared to be changing and forming into something. Slowly and surely a face emerged, a face he felt he knew, but could not quite place. It was as if this, it was if, if this face of leaves was all of creation in one image. It looked ancient and new at the same time. Now Jack at this point may have considered that this was an oxymoron, but Jack didn't know what an oxymoron was, so he didn't think this. So instead, he just stared in awe, mouth slightly open. All of a sudden, he came to his senses. Magical place, face of leaves, it, it can't be, no, you're the green man. And then, the penny dropped. Whilst he was so busy trying to please others, he had simply forgotten that he had taken the leaves and flowers without thought nor thanks to this place. Moreover, he had failed to ask for permission to remove such things from a place like this. He had to kick himself, as he should have known, it's better to... You know, you don't take without asking, and this has consequences. It is vital in a magical realm, lest one upsets and angles the woodland spirits that dwelled there, and may have felt he'd stolen from them. He sank to his knees as he approached the green man. Jack, he begged forgiveness, and offered himself as payment to atone for any harm he had caused. A booming voice echoed across the clearing. You have stolen from this place by taking what is not yours. You did not seek permission from those who dwell here and who use this place as their home. However, I see that your heart is pure and your intentions were noble. And not to cause harm is what you intended to do. Your actions only came from a place of love and you only wanted to share with others the spirit of summer to release its energy for all to be blessed. But there are consequences to every action, and for you to continue with this deed, you must agree to what I tell you next. You may take what you need, but nothing more. You must never forget to seek permission from those who dwell here first, for this will please those spirits and your rewards will be greater. But Jack, know this. One day, when the time is right, you will come to this place for the final time and you will have to offer yourself willingly to remain here forever. Jack knew what he had to do and he agreed. By the power of all that is nature, so mote it be. The atmosphere returned to what it was on the first day he was there. And so from that day onward, on the days just before Beltane, Jack, he would walk up to the hills into the greenwood and find that clearing where the green man lived. And he would chant, Oh greenwood tree, I call to thee and ask for permission to take some leaves and flowers please, as a token of transition, for to take what I need and nothing more and to give them to the townsfolk, for them to know the will has turned as we witness summer's cloak. The spirits were pleased, and as promised, Jack took only what he needed and returned to the town. He gave the tokens to both milkmaids and sweeps, and even though they were only given one small posy each this time, as their spirits were raised, the flowers and leaves would not be depleted in any way. And this was despite everyone who wanted a piece got one. It was soon realized there was not so much the tokens that were needed, but the symbolism and the spirit within that made the change happen. Over the many years that passed, Jack consulted with the green man 
sought permission and instructed the milkmaids and sweeps and in turn they took great pride in the task of showing off and parading great garlands of flowers and leaves and would usually compete with each other to make the best one. It was all harmless fun really and they would get a great following. People would dress up and wear green and even paint their faces as they paraded along the streets, often stopping to rest at a pub on the way of course. The whole town could witness the festivities and the flowers and leaves would be shared amongst all who needed it. Jack was finally able to achieve his goal and he could see that the spirit of summer lived on and would be released into everybody's lives year after year. Always happy and content and good with the world. One day, around the 1st of May, Jack took his final walk up the hill into the greenwood and into the clearing. He had become older, weary and tired in the past few years, but his legacy was for all to see, for there was colour and happiness in everybody's lives, and the people had understood its meaning. He had achieved something that could not be described in a few words on a piece of paper or in this little story, but whatever it was, it was truly remarkable. Jack slowly found his way to where he had met the green man and approached the mighty oak tree. The tree rustled and moved as it had done before. The ancient but new face appeared, the face he had come to know well, for he had communed with many times before. The green man smiled at him. Jack, he said, your life will soon end and a new chapter will begin. For you, it is time to fill your sacred vow. You may have felt that the magic lay only within this place, but you'd be wrong, for the real spirit of summer is within you. You are the one that brought colour and happiness to the people. But you must join us now in this place, but your memory will live on forever. You will never be forgotten, Jack and your spirit that is the summertime will be released every year on May Day. And Jack was never seen again. Or was he? But that is how it happened, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, of how Jack ended up in the green. Or maybe I just made it up in this story. Maybe it doesn't matter after all. A wise bard called Dam said, Do you dream of drinking from the grail, that the truth is held within a tale, and Arthur sleeps now, ready to return? Do you know that Jack lives in the green, and things are never as they seem, and life is more than the money that you earn? But what to ether is truth, each year in many places round this realm of Albion, people gather together make great garlands of flowers and leaves. Some even go as far as creating a huge spinning, dancing, walking bush with a crown of flowers as a lovely tribute to Jack in the green. Now our Jack can be seen paraded round the streets and the milkmaids and sweeps and Morris men and women dance up the energies as he makes his way to the top of the hill. And as the energies build and build, the Morris men dance around a spinning jack and they slay him. They tear him limb from limb, then they toss his leaves and flowers into the crowds. They release the spirit of summer into this land once more. And all was happy and good and content with the world once more. But you already know this to be true already, don't you?